AI computers. You gotta love them. Hi, everybody. It's Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet to do so. And if you get anything from my work at Connect Done, Epiphany, Mind Blow Moment, new book to read, new author to explore, readings you like, artwork you like, please go support me. The link is down below. And if you like artwork, visit my website alleycatcreations211.com that link is also in the description where you can look at all the fun stuff that i do if you're interested email me if you would like something custom or you'd like something you see and if it's available we can make a deal that's how i'm going to support myself and i have to look for a job for reals this time um the only person going to take care of me is me and no one else. And I I need to start getting on the bandwagon. I don't have secondary incomes. I don't have streams flowing in. I It's just me and it's not much. So let's hold out. Hope everybody had a really good New Year's. Mine was horrible and suck ass and shitty. But I transmuted that energy today. The Schumann is spiking, and I'm not going to let one day break my feng shui. Not going to let it do it. And this, I'm going out of sync instead of doing Manly P. Hall, which I have to figure out in one of the, the next chapter I'm supposed to read, there's a lot of diagrams and he talks about that, but I don't want to read something where the t the, even if I showed you in the book, it's super tiny. So I have to go gather all these. And if I can't, I'm just going to skip the chapter. But today, the message of Aquaria. Sorry. Man, man, know thyself. Coming off of the last spiritual soul advice, um, I know a lot of people started watching that much more than the book reads, and that's okay. But these, especially the Curtis books, go succinct with what I talk about. So thank you for joining me here. And thank you for supporting me. Man, know thyself. Don't I say that a lot. Quote, saith the great law, in order to become the knower of all self, thou hast first of self to be the knower. End quote. To reach the knowledge of that self, Thou hast to give up self to non-self, being to non-being, end quote. The voice of silence, Bolvansky. Quote, ignorance is the cause of imperfection. Man do not know themselves and therefore they do not understand the things of their inner world. Each man has the essence of God and all the wisdom and power of the word world germinally in himself persilius hartman i mean i didn't need to read that to tell you that i tell you that all guys all the time every student of mysticism is familiar with the axiom that man is a microcosm of the macrocosm and has grown familiar with the idea, at least in a superficial way, that in some mysterious manner, man is an epitome of the universe. Let us try to comprehend this idea and make it, make of it a greater reality, a more vital help toward the unfoldment of our inner life. For a fundamental object of mysticism is to find back of everything the reality which gives its life this is a true this is as true of a 
trite axiom or an idea as anything in the manifested universe. We look upon the physical universe and admire the beauty and diversity of its manifestations. We enthuse over its outer wonders, its trees and flowers, its rocks and streams, its wondrous store of wealth hidden behind the surface, its rivers, mountains, and its oceans. Truly a marvelous world. Then we look deeper and find in the sea a vast universe inhabited by an infinite variety of lives, the microscope reveals a still more minute, but no less wonderful world of life in every drop of water. The telescope overweighs the intellect and thrills the soul with the mighty revelation of shining stars, flaming comets, glowing suns, millions of times larger than our own, and vast cosmic systems too great for comprehension. While chemistry and physics tells us that the electrons within an atom of substance are relatively as far from each other as the planets in our solar system, yet all both great and small are moving in majestic harmony. And behind and within all these outer manifestations, we find an infinite number of tribes of living conscious forces, having the earth, the air, the fire, the water for their habitat, as well as the great hierarchies of angelic beings and the still more ethereal worlds. Each and all of these forms of life and consciousness follow their own appointed way, have their own evolution and fulfill their destined role. No wonder the unenlightened exclaimed, quote, do you mean to tell me us that man is such a universe that he is a microcosm in exact similitude to the microcosm? End quote. As we enter the first gate upon the path of attainment, we must stop and consider the mandate which is carved over its portal. Man, know thyself. What a vast knowing this must be. First to know man in the aggregate and then to know thyself in particular. In the study of man, we are wont to consider him under at least three divisions and say that he is a spirit manifesting through a mind and a body. Or we may consider him under seven divisions, four lower pertaining to his bodies and three higher pertaining to his soul. An overshadowing triangle whose apex reaches up and puts him in touch with the vastness of the great universal one life. But such a division is little more than as if we were to divide the universe into its four constituent elements of earth, air, fire, and water, and its three higher ethers, and ignore the component parts and the forces and intelligences which manifest through them. For within each division, there are innumerable minor ones. But although the subject is endlessly complex, we can begin with the physical body as it is the lowest and most easily understood division. How shall we go about knowing it? A study of its anatomical parts reveals to us a most compl complicated mechanism, yet as wondrous delicacy and marvelous adaptability to the requirements of life. It is a mechanism, therefore, which must have all the careful and intelligent treatment that we would give to most sensitive and valuable scientific instrument. A study of its functional activities will acquaint us with the fundamental laws and principles of physiology, which must be observed in a common sense way if we are to keep it in a clean and healthful condition as a fit temple for the indwelling of its divine occupant, the real self. Not only must we observe the well-known laws of hygiene, diet, and sanitation, but we must realize that all its activities are the result of the countless currents of one life sweeping through it, the life which builds up the bodies through which we are manifesting in each of the worlds. Realize, <clears throat> realize 
that life here in the physical world is not something separate from life in the higher realms, but is simply a continuation of the life downward into a denser medium of expression. We also find that the body is not a mere mechanism, but a living and highly intelligent animal with the functions, desires, appetites, and habits of any animal. Hence, it needs training and control, just as does any other high-bred animal. If it is to become a willing, obedient, and efficient servant of its Lord and Master, hence through the directing power of thought, we should strive to make the body express our highest ideals, become an embodiment of the real self. Yet if after complying with all the laws of physical health, the body still seems to lack, we should strive to hold vitality to that thought that we are standing in the glowing stream of the one life, reaching out and gathering up and assimilating the forces of the river of life. As a rose gathers from the soil and sun, the nourishment that goes to make up its life abundant and feel this divine life gently permeating and vitalizing us and fulfilling all our needs. After considering the needs of the body, we must recognize those of the mental expression of the indwelling real self. We must learn to discriminate and recognize those thoughts and desires which well up into our minds from the subconscious mind or the mind of the animal self whose seat is in the solar plexus and realize that they are not our thoughts and desires but those of the animal body asking us to rec recognize and gratify them many students not understanding its nature and functions concentrate on our solar plexus in an effort to obtain spiritual enlightenment this being the center of the animal consciousness, concentration upon it quickens the forces of the animal nature. And if at the same time, the student is trying to master the nature, the conflict <laughs> is apt to bring about an unbalanced condition. It is much like speaking kindly to a dog to give him, to get him to perform his best tricks and then beating him for performing. It is the forces from the physical sun together with the astral currents which center in the solar plexus and not the, fo the, not the forces from the spiritual sun. And since the function of the physical sun is to bring forth the physical life in nature, concentration upon its center in the body naturally stimulates our physical forces, not our spiritual. The focus of the spiritual sun is in the heart. Hence, if we desire to simulate our spiritual growth, we should not concentrate upon the solar plexus, but upon the heart. Not, however, upon the physical heart, but upon the development and expression of the heart qualities. We must recognize the currents of thought which come from the rational mind, the intellect of the personality, which operates through the cortex of the brain as the subconscious does through the ganglia of the solar plexus both containing similar tripolar nerve cells as it seeks for the comfort and aggrandizement of the personal self. This aspect of the mind also needs training and control, for it often fails to understand, hence doubts, worries, and becomes discouraged. Hence, just as the subconscious mind must be taught to submit its desires to our decision, so must the rational mind be taught to submit and to rely confidently upon the guidance of the higher super consciousness or spiritual mind of the soul, which guidance is always given in answer to aspirations and sincere prayer for guidance. If the mind grows discouraged at the seeming lack of conditions for peace, harmony, and spiritual advice and advance, point out to it the analogy in nature. Where does the rose get its nourishment and the materials for its growth and development? All the materials needed to put forth leaf and bud, blossom and perfume out of the commonplace materials of its environment, yet not out of the materials themselves, but out of the divine life force that is back of all of it. How does it perform this miracle of transmutation? By keeping confident and poised and allowing the one life to flow through it in perfect harmony to manifest its destiny 
Therefore, in times of doubt and depression, we should say to ourselves, I will keep to I would keep so calm and poised, so cheerful and confident in such close touch with the stream of the divine Christ force within me that I shall draw all things to me that are needed for my growth and development, for strengthening my roots and perfecting my blossoming. But to do so, I must open my heart to the sun of righteousness and allow the Christ force to manifest through me in thought word and deed that I may express in inner or real self and thus fulfill my destiny. Remember that one of the fundamental laws of mind is that every thought tends to express itself in action unless counter counteracted or neutralized by an opposite thought of greater power. Therefore, we must refuse to think the kind of thoughts we do not wish to express through us, but never fight them. For to do so, we are concentrating upon them and giving them greater power. Instead of resisting or fighting them, even to pray over them, we must simply turn our minds away from them by concentrating and filling our minds with the opposite kind of thought, one which we do wish to have expressed through us. Another fundamental law is that every thought we emit into our minds and contemplate we give a power over us. We do not have to admit into our minds, contemplate and go over and over every thought that may arise in or be present, presented to our consciousness. We can turn away from and refuse to dwell upon those thoughts which do not measure up to the ideals of our lives. Therefore, remember that we do not have to admit or contemplate evil thoughts unless we choose to do so learn these rules by heart pause going personal here a lot of people want to know why i disappear in chats 90 percent of the time it's gremlins the other half is the hate that is spewed in chats and all over social media I've kind of been detoxing off of these things because I am not feeding it my energy anymore. I'm not reading it to even contemplate it, to even give it an energetic thought. As soon as somebody says something that it's not a trigger, that it goes against my righteousness and will, I cut it off. There is also an event that happened. I don't even know what my status of my relationship is, but something very not okay happened uh, the day before on Eve of New Year's. And it took everything within me to try to figure what a, whatever was going on, which I'm not going to disclose. And I had to leave the situation. My father came to me and said, you got to go. You're not feeding this energy anymore. And you're not going to sit here and absorb it either. This is not for your detriment. So I did. And in the last two, almost two days, I slept. I transmuted. And I had to take all the things that came up during that episode in my life real life happening in the real moment and transmute it it hurt it sucked but i'm not dwelling on it and i'm not feeding in its energy anymore life is going to be thrown at you you're going to be thrown tests and trials you're going to be thrown things that are out of your control it's what your reaction to it and what energy you're feeding it that will consistently manifest to make things worse. Or when you don't give it its energy, it loses its oomph and it dies off. It's up to you. I stopped feeding the negative agendas. I stopped feeding the people that are doing the harm energy. I know that they're doing wrong. It's already something I already knew within me. But I'm not feeding them the energy anymore. 
and people continuously still do. I don't know why. Yeah, we need to know the wrongs that have happened, but we don't need to feel the energy that feeds them. There's the difference. To know the wrongs, to understand where we went wrong as a society, as a humanity, that's one thing. To feed them the hate, the energy that most people do on a daily basis, it's going to perpetually continue until you stop feeding it its energy. I keep saying it's like Freddy Krueger when all the kids start dreaming about him and his name starts coming up back again and the memories start coming back up he manifests in their dreams and kills them in real life watch those movies it's 80s horror flicks they're fun but they really tell the truth in kind of a sick way <laughs> how manifestation works through a movie they have to tell you remember that Those currents, thoughts, and forces from the astral world must also be recognized. If we find that we are becoming more sensitive to the thoughts of others and are responding to psychic conditions, here also we must learn to discriminate and respond only to those forces which are harmonious and constructive. Pause. Good angels, bad angels. This one and that one. I know what is coming through me. I made sure to put up my protection. But I also know that I don't feed the negative energy. And those angels that everybody's afraid of, oh, is a bad angel, good angel, bad angel, is bad angel, bad. They're still of God's construct. And when they move up in density, that's an illusory thing that we all feed. Good and evil, we feed it. When you move up, it kind of just changes. We all were bad in a life. We all were the murderer. So it, how are we... We're conscious of us now, and we most of us that watch me chose the light, which is great. But I bet you in another life, you are a part, you know, team dark. That's a paradigm that all of us had to play. So who are we to judge higher density entities coming down and giving us an experience? Like there's a mismosh mash of people that can't get that through their consciousness. It's either good or bad. It's this or that. When you should be starting to learn neutrality and looking at both sides and seeing that whatever you feed is where your energy goes. So stop feeding those concepts. Like I said, I have Archangel Hillel that works with me. And most people, oh my God, Lucifer. Okay, but that, his story, the fallen, we all fell. Hello, hi guys, we fell into material, the material world. We started off with source. Did we go up or down? We densified, we came down. We all fell. So are we bad too for doing that? Or are we playing a role so God can know itself? We got to let go of this trivial back and forth crap that other people are putting out there because the book says so. And again, they were these these people were way before their time in explaining the esoteric even if you don't see it as esoteric, it it's very close to how I think. You need, therefore remember that we do not have to admit or contemplate evil thoughts. 
unless we choose to do so. So it's a choice. You know what I choose not to do? Feed it. I don't feed it in my heart space. I don't feel it in my thoughts. I don't, as soon as I hear it, it's off. As soon as I hear it, I mute. As soon as I see it in a chat, I stop. Because I don't want to be involved in feeding the agenda, the negativity, the negativity. I stopped listening to so many people and so many things because I can't do it anymore. Until more people start understanding how the world and that I self works. Lastly, before I move on on the book. We all read our stories, but our veil has been there so that we forget what we wrote in and how we wrote it in for ourselves. It still doesn't take away the pain and the hurt that it causes in the moment. It takes time to transmute the pain, the experience, and to turn your mindset around to make it a positive Oh, what did I learn out of this? What was the eagle's eye view out of this? It takes time. It doesn't happen in the instant where most of us are advanced, but even in the moment, that's a lot of mental gymnastics when it's a heated situation. So just realize, give yourself grace and compassion when you're in those moments, but don't project that on that advice onto other people when you haven't done it for yourself. Because in the next breath, the next conversation, the next words go back to and revert back to the old way. We're here to create a new way. Let's get back to the actual way. We must protect ourselves from the undesirable forces by realizing that the power of the indwelling Christ force is the great protector and the great adjuster of conditions both in the inner life and in the outer life. With the consciousness of this protection, as our higher faculties begin to unfold, we can use them to expand our consciousness, deepen our understanding and advance our spiritual unfoldment. For we realize that whether the finer forces of which we are now conscious come from the thoughts of others or from our disembodied friends, from the planets under which we were born, or from the kingdoms of the elementals, they must all be ruled and made to contribute toward our ongoing. Instead of being allowed to find uncontrolled expression through and rule us, we must also learn to recognize and discriminate between the sources from which we are receiving these influences. When I go into divine neutrality, that is actually Lucifer working through me. I, discri I discriminate and discern in me if that feels in my heart space to be true and right. When my father came to me the other night to tell me to leave, I knew it was his frequency signature. I cried. I don't normally cry for much of anything out of maybe happiness, but not much anymore out of sadness or depression. But he came to me and that is my sign. That is absolutely him. I felt my hand being held and that was my dad. I know a lot of people channel and I can tell you right now, I watch Pamela Aralyn and there are some entities that channel through her. I don't feel it. And other entities, she's spot on. And not to say she's not discerning, but I don't feel it in my heart space. Therefore, I shut it off. These are things that all of us need to keep and continue to do on a daily basis. Remember, I said a long time ago, your thoughts are not your own. Who is riding your vehicle besides source? 
Higher density entities do take a joy ride and a roller coaster ride through you. They're having the experience with you. So make sure you're doing your protection. Make sure you are cleansing yourself. Make sure you are, if you have negative thoughts and depression and, you know, I was, I it hit me in waves the other day. It did. A lot of things went through my mind and I had to transmute all those negative thoughts and feelings and what ifs. because that was my old way of thinking and sometimes you it just happens but i caught myself i did a lot of meditating and i i released because what will be will be and what is not in my control bye the rational mind should always look up to and receive its inspiration not from our disembodied friends or from thoughts of others but from the super consciousness or spiritual mind of the real self then by means of the higher illumination thus received it should guide the activities of the personality and also reach down and train and control the subconscious mind the spiritual mind is always the court of last appeal for stored up in it it's the experience or lessons learned from all past incarnations. And this experience is, seeks to impress upon the rational mind and the personality if we will only listen, respond, and give it expression. Conscious is the steady pressure of the consciousness of the spiritual mind, which all feel to a greater or lesser degree. It is the consciousness of the real self reflected upon the rational mind for the purpose of illuminating and guiding the personality. In the earlier stages of spiritual unfoldment, it manifests simply as a strong impression of right or wrong, to do or not to do, without giving explanations, reasons, or arguments. But as the aspirant becomes conscious of his real self and seeks to become one with it, and express it gradually the divine self is able to speak to him direct and guide admonish encourage or rebuke in a definite way all these phases of the self and the forces which beat upon it should be read about and studied but they cannot be mastered by the intellect alone or by the unaided powers of the personality only as a knower, the thinker, the real self is recognized and given supreme direction of our lives can they really be really known in the mystical sense as a personal realization and comprehension. This knower, this thinker, this self, this I am stands in the center of our individual universe just as the sun is in the center of our physical universe and is the ruler over all of it the source of life, light, and power. In fact, it is the maker of our heaven and our earth, the evolver of our personal self, and it's also its redeemer. Because this real self is the ambassador of the Christ and is of the same essence as the cosmic Christ, which vitalizes all divisions of the vast universe, through acquaintance, realization, and correlation with the self, we can enter into an understanding of those cosmic centers of life, force, and consciousness, which have their miniature centers and points of contact within our bodies. The man who has thus found himself through realization and correlation with, the, with his inner self has found the Christ enthroned in the midst of his universe, and by identifying his consciousness with the indwelling Christ consciousness, he can enter into the consciousness of all things in the vaster universe and can learn to know himself as those forces manifest in his personal universe or microcosm. In that last paragraph, that is in the stage of where I'm beginning. I'm in this stage, whatever you want to call it. I've been embodying 
my higher self, the Christ within me. I'm being tested to see through outside individuals, places, people's things. I'm being tested to see if I passed, if I have emerged into this. It takes time and it's not. In nature, we find the mighty Christ principle expressing harmoniously according to the great law of manifestation, vitalizing and bringing into manifestation the ideals and the divine mind. And as we learn to identify ourselves with the Christ in us, we aid it in bringing forth in us the divine ideals until we reach the point where we are able to realize and know that we are sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. After Christ has been born in the heart of man, has been laid among the animals in the manger of his physical existence, wrapped in swaddling bands of mind stuff, subconsciously manifesting in the astral and awakened and manifesting in his spiritual nature, then may the Jesus man, the divine physician, the healer, he said to have come to earth in our lives for only as the personal man is taught to follow the Jesus life can the Christ manifest consciously in him. Like the story of Jesus, we must pass through all phases of that life. We must be the carpenter's son constructively doing his duty in the lower station of life in which he finds himself, striving to build his temple by com compass and square. Yet through the power of the Christ, whose swaddling bands of consciousness, he is day by day unwrapping. He must learn that all events that come to him are but the carpenter's tools, which he must carve out his temple and accomplish the works of his father. He must remain in the obscurity of Egypt for a season, while the Herod king desire who rules the personality, seeks to slay him, who is ultimately to become the ruler of the life. He must heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and feed the multitude within his own body with spiritual food. He must strive. He must suffer. He must be misunderstood and condemned, yet never must forget his real mission. He must hang upon the cross of material conditions until in the very depths of his being, in the agony of the higher consciousness that has been born within him, that consciousness which strives to uncover and reveal the Christ child to the world that cannot understand his cries out, I thirst. We're doing this as a humanity right now. So. one aspect is the thirst of the despairing personality for the old life in the world. And it's seeming satisfaction, it's happiness and security. But in another and higher sense, it is the cry of the awakened man for more wisdom. How best to do the works of his father. How best to lift up the Christ light that all men shall be drawn into radiance of that light. He realizes the mighty power of the Christhood within him and thirsts for the ability to manifest it without crucifying it. But he finds the task too great and lays down the burden cry. It is finished, Father. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Only when the awakened personality realizes that it cannot achieve through its own intellectual powers the destiny that has been glimpsed and places all the adore and enthusiasm of his desires to accomplish into the hands, symbol of power to accomplish, of the Father, the real self, and ceases to struggle, it is it is the crucifixion over. We're all going through this, to some extent. This is the most important step in the soul's unfoldment. 
We may think that when we reach great heights of mastery, when we can rule the elementals, use our psychic faculties, levitate the body, etc., we have taken wonderful steps, but the most important step that can be taken by man is the symbolized by the crucifixion, namely, when the personal man has learned through great suffering that no matter how unselfish or devoted, no matter how great the work he is doing, he cannot make the final attainment into his own strength. He must be willing to be crucified, not rejoicing in the crucifixion as a sign of his superiority over others, but recognizing that it is only a crucifixion of the lower man that the glory of the Christ within may shine forth the better. In fact, the Christ could accomplish his work more perfectly without the distraction which the suffering of the personality brings upon him. If the personality could learn and respond without the crucifixion. All the crucifixion through which humanity insists on passing. How the great physician, the healer of souls, struggles with the personality and hangs upon the cross of agony. What it What is it all for? It is to awaken in an intellectual man an abiding sense of the indwelling divinity and its power to overcome all things once the opposition of the personality has ceased. He must realize that he is something more than man, that there is something his cultured mind cannot grasp, which must come as a revelation from the heart, that he must call upon the Christ within must yield up the sense of his sufficiency and superiority for his God. The intellect has forsaken him. Cry, he never so loud. As we find at the beginning of this chapter, man being a universe in himself, every part and division of his nature has its own inhabitants. In his intellectual world, he is not tempted from without, but from within. He is not sent down in the lower worlds to be set upon by powers of evil demons, elementals, creatures of which he has no consciousness and consequently no power to conquer. Everything that comes thus to tempt him is an inhabitant of his own mental world. For through the creative power of his thought force, he has peopled his world with all kinds of creations which seek expression through him and he has thus opened the door to all the corresponding forces in the surrounding worlds his tempers are creatures of his own fashioning living upon the tender leaves his tree of life has put forth just as the infant infest infestimal lives that the microscope reveals feed upon the leaves of the tree and if allowed to go on unchecked, destroy it. He has permitted his lower self to lead in procession all the forces and inhabitants of his world because it has put forth a great intellectual branch which reaches up into the mental world, while the real self, the divine being within, remains imprisoned within that world, realizing its own godhood, yet unable to induce the personality to manifest it. But just as our physical bodies in our astral and mental worlds have their inhabitants, so does the spiritual world of each individual have its inhabitants. The real self is a spiritual world, has many angelic beings and forces attached to him because they inhabit his world, although most of us are quite unaware of it. Yet if we will open the door to them as we do to the inhabitants of our lower worlds, they will just as surely minister to us and manifest through us, not destructively bringing about in harmony and suffering, but constructively bringing about harmony and joy. Pause. Everything I said right there and again i'm reading this with you i didn't ever read this before so again i am validated in what i say 
Everything is within. You feed negative entities, you feed the energy, and yes, they're thought forms that are manifested through other people because they're unaware of their anger and their tension and they cause things to manifest in this world. And then a lot of us are having to be the ones to deal with it. But things are working through you, through you. I channel all the time. I actually, crazy as it is, the last spiritual soul advice, I manifested, unbeknownst to me, about detachment of everything. If things are meant to be in my life, they're going to stay. And if things are not meant to be in my life, I have to detach. Oh, well, that came within a day and a half. Boom. And then I had to put my foot in my mouth and go, oh, okay. This sucks. It hurts. It's not cool. But hey, I said it. It came into fruition and I got to deal with it now and work with myself to release. Forgive myself for being unknowing. Again, there's a lot of things in this world we have no control over. We can't control those reactions. We can't control those thoughts, feelings. We can help them, but lending your help sometimes doesn't always work in your favor, as it didn't in mine. We can only bring compassion and grace and forgiveness to those who hurt us, who mislead us, misguide us, and hope that they see the light of day. I saw that. Hi, Spirit. Again. <laughs> Therefore, as we learn to know ourselves and our creations in, our, in all our worlds, we will end the crucifixion by saying, of our personal reliance on outer conditions and forces, it is finished into the hands of my divine self. I commit my spirit. Well, now I know what to say. <laughs> and I said it. I make it so. Then we will begin to open our consciousness to the angelic forces from the spiritual world and we'll know ourselves as sons of God in the process of unfoldment and manifestation and learn to manifest the real self as wholeheartedly and completely as we have here to manifested the lower self of personality. And I'm going to leave it there because that's a lot to take in. Um, I, I really recommend, I'm going to probably reread this for myself a few times, um, this chapter. I think it's very plausible. I totally resonate with this. I align in my heart space with what was said. I've been saying very similar things, different words, but the vib vibratory and frequency state is there. I said a lot in my spiritual soul advice about the change that we all need to be making and change takes time. It's habits, it's mindsets, it's following through when shit really hits the fan in your life or something happens to you that is out of, out of left field, you witness something, you're a part of something and some things go wrong. What is the lesson there? And did you go into your higher self? What was it screaming at you to do? My father came down and told me to leave. And then I sat and meditated and transmuted all the feelings and hurt and harm that was in me. I released it and let it go. And then the today I processed a lot of why did I feel that way? I, I, I took the bird's eye view today to look down and go, okay, this is my lesson. Okay. This is, this is the course of action I need to start taking but it takes time to learn how to do that stuff. 
And when you're in the moment and you have all those energies around you, especially empaths, it's like twice as hard because you're in, you're, you're taking in everybody else's gunk. Even if you put your walls up, certain people you, you take in anyway, because it's overwhelming. Mm. It's going to take me a few days to get this all released, but I took the steps today. I do it in waves, but I want, I talk personal to everybody because I don't want anybody to think that I'm above or superior to anybody. I'm not. I'm human, just like all of you going through this human experience with a lot of shit that's out of my control. I don't control other people. Right. I don't put thoughts in other people's heads. I make suggestions and I hope that they take my advice. I try not to steer people in the wrong, the wrong way. And, you know, when I met with resistance, I back off because I'm not feeding that energy. I'm too old of a soul to feed the shit. I'm done. I'm tired. And I know a lot of you are as well. This is a major chapter. I've been trying to get more people on board with knowing thyself in a totality type sense. When you start loving yourself as the first step, identifying the love within unconditionally, how pretty you are, how handsome you are, you're going to make the best day ever, even if it's a crappy one. That's what happened to me yesterday. This is now another New Year's I spent by myself. It didn't feel great. And I said, okay, so how am I going to make this better? I put my little 2024 glasses on. I put my headband on and I celebrated my own way. And then I meditated a gamma wave frequency and did, I forgot what it's called. Brian Scott does it all the time where you re, you're, you're revisioning your day. So I went back through my day to make it better. So I did a lot of self work in the last two days to transmute, to release, to heal, and to get myself back into equilibrium. For many other people, it might take a week, it may take a month. You know, a lot of people are losing people right now. That's not easy. I went through a lot of loss, a lot of funerals. My mom was buried six years ago on the 28th of December. That day is like it happened yesterday in my mind. Loss is not easy. And a lot of people are going through that right now. So we have to give compassion and grace and try to lead people into their heart space. Understanding that that's God, they had a contract and they have to let it go. That doesn't mean you don't love those people and you don't honor their essence. Always, they're just transformed. That's all. When you understand and go in, a lot of this world will start making a lot more sense. The way you mentally traverse will get easier. If this was me, maybe eight to 10 years ago, I would have gone into the severe depression. I'm going to end my life. I can't stand this anymore mode. I didn't feel worthy. I wasn't really given opportunities to be actually loved and admired. I never felt desired by anybody. No one ever treated me like I thought I should be treated as a woman. I was disrespected. And I went a long time not being in a relationship because I didn't want to have to experience those feelings again until I was able to determine to bring someone into my life that might actually do the right thing by me. That hasn't happened yet. We'll see what happens. 
but the old me would have flipped out. <laughs> this new me, yeah, I was upset because I had to get shed all the all the energy off of me. It's a really tense situation, but I grounded myself and I'm now back and I'm fine. Still some stuff I need to shed and some releasing I need to do, but I got the bulk of that out the last two days and I feel fine. So I want everybody to understand we're all at different places and situations. Finding yourself will get easier when you know how to transmute energy, when you know how to remove yourself, put your boundaries up and honor yourself. I don't want anybody taking advantage of me. Plenty of people try to. I don't feed that energy anymore. Everything and every thought is a piece of energy that floats out into the ether. What are you feeding? Nourish your soul. Nourish thyself. Go into your heart space. That's where it all begins. And with that, sending each and every one of you love, light, compassion, grace, protection, and shielding energy. Happy New Year. Please be safe, be seen. I had to take my Christmas decorations off my lawn and house today, so I'm a little bare. But I hope all of you had a great holiday, whatever you celebrate. I hope if you are by yourself that you made the best out of it and that you did some inflection and some work on yourselves. Don't pass the opportunities up to do these things. They're very important. Change is happening. It's incoming now. The energies are heightening. The attacks are heightening. Are you prepared? Mentally. Because that will ricochet physically. And with that, guys, I hope to see you on the next one. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Please, if you're interested in any of my work, the links are down below. I don't know when I'm going to find a job, but when I do, this channel is going... Consistency is unfortunately the route i have to go <laughs> so until next time guys thank you so much and i hope to see you on the next one